Remember the story of the shepherds? They're hanging out there, out in the fields. They're just minding their own business, watching the sheep. Angel of the Lord comes to them. They're terrified. He says, don't worry. I bring you uh, good news of great joy. Uh, Unto you is born in the city of David a child who is Christ the Lord, right? And then all of his buddies, this angel's buddies, came and joined him. It's there in your notes. Luke chapter 2. And uh, while they're hanging out with him, they, uh, they decided to sing a song, Glory to God in the Highest. And then, uh, what, what's the word they use? And peace on earth, on whom God's favor rests. To, to men on earth, on whom God's favor rests. Uh, this child came as a purveyor of peace. And he's given you and I an opportunity to overcome the conflicts of our lives. Now, there, there's three specific areas that I want to talk to you about today, areas of conflict that you and I experience. Uh, one is, is between us and God. And I want to talk to you plainly and clearly about how if you are not living a life in faith, uh, faith in Jesus Christ, and if you haven't received Jesus Christ, you are in a conflict with your God. I want to talk to you about that. Now, some of us, uh, whether we've found Jesus or not, we're, we're in conflict inside with ourselves. And we're, we're just wrestling uh, with life in here. I want you to know that Jesus came to give you peace there too. And then finally, probably most obviously or whatever, Jesus died or came to this world, was born, uh, grew up, uh, went to a cross and died and was risen again so that you could have peace in your relationships with other people. I did it with motions. You ready? Everybody stand up. Here we go. We're going to remember all this with some motions. Christmas motions. Yay! Christmas motions. (laughs) The visitors are like, really? Yes, really. Welcome to Bay Life. All right. So we're going to do, we're going to do the peace sign. Everybody give me Richard Nixon. Here we go. Some of, some of the kids are like, who? Anyway, uh, Richard, okay, so you get the peace signs. We're going to go, first of all, we're going to have peace up there. Peace up there, point into the sky. And then we're going to have peace in here. And if you want to do a Sammy Sosa, you know, do whatever you want to. Right. And then finally, we're going to have peace out there. So we're going to have peace Up there, peace in here, and peace out there. One more time with feeling. Ready? Peace up there, peace in here, and peace out there. Peace. All right, sit down. (laughs) That was extra. Let me talk to you about this prince of peace, this one who brings peace on earth. He can give you peace up there, he can give you peace in here, and he can give you peace out there. Let me pray. Hey, God, as, as we get into peace this morning and talking about how you want it uh, to be a, a part of our lives, you want to unravel the conflicts we find ourselves in internally and externally, and especially in the conflict that we might have with our God, would you please uh, open our ears, open our hearts to what you have to say. I pray, God, that people walk out of here this morning ready to make peace. Uh, and that, that you, God, through your spirit, uh, would enable them to do that, would inspire them to do that, uh, and that, that, that you would uh, you know, forge that for them in their lives and in their relationships. Uh, push me aside, speak in my place, and help us with this thing called peace, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's talk, first of all, about peace up there. This is the primary peace. If you want to circle it in your notes, I think it bears circling. All the other pieces or the other types of peace, depend on this peace being in place. You must have peace with God before you can have peace in here and out there. Jesus came so that we might have peace, first and foremost, with God. Some of you are like, I didn't know I was at war with God. Well, the Bible's very clear. God is a perfect and holy God. He cannot be in the presence of unholiness or sin. And you and I, as the Bible has told us in several places, are marked by sin. We've, we've gone our own way. It says that in Isaiah uh, chapter uh, 53, verse 6, where it says, We all, like sheep, have gone astray, and each of us has turned to his own way. Uh, because we've taken our my ways and the directions that they lead, they've led us away from God. And this is an offense to him. 
Uh, whether you knew this or not, he created you, and he created you with a purpose. The purpose that you were created with was to be with him, to do life with him. And if you haven't been, then you've been against him. There's no, like, uh, you know, some, some religions have created kind of a middle ground where, where we're sort of okay, but not really. No, the, the, it's pretty black and white as far as the scriptures teach, that you're either with God or you are not. You are either for him or unfortunately, you are against him. He is either for you, or, be, or be because you uh, lack uh, a faith in Jesus Christ, he is against you. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 2 that we, before Christ comes into our lives, are objects of wrath. Now, that means that we're things that, uh, you know, does anybody have something that they like to throw when you're angry? You know, you got this, uh, when I was a kid, my pillow was my punching bag. And if I got mad enough, I'd go into it. And that was my object of wrath. And I would take my anger out on it. And, and just so we're clear, uh, without Jesus Christ in our life, our eventual end is as an object of God's wrath. And, and he's not unjust in his anger. He's not, you know, like someone who is uh, creating conflict with us on this plane. His, his anger, his, his wrath is just because he's perfect and we're not. So, so Jesus came then to negotiate the peace between us and our God. And it's through him and his sacrifice. Let me, let me pick up what it says in Isaiah 53. It says, uh, uh, We all like sheep have gone astray, and each of us has turned his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. All of our sins were, were laid on Jesus at the cross where he died. See, sin, as the Bible teaches, uh, must be paid for in death. It's either yours or or in this case, it's Jesus. And Jesus came and died uh, a sacrificial death. He stood in our place. He took all of our sins upon himself so that if we put our faith in him, our sins are forgiven, and we have peace with God our Father. It comes through Christ, because of Christ. He's negotiated our peace. It says in verse 5 of that same chapter, Isaiah 53, that he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, which means sin. And he says, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Before I talk about these other forms of peace, if you're sitting here this, this morning and you've not, by faith, chosen Christ and received from him his gift that he's given you by dying for your sins, then you, you're not at peace with God, and if this piece isn't in place, this piece up there, then we can't really talk about peace in here and peace out there. It, it, it's primary. We settle this score, we resolve this conflict, and then we deal with the other ones. How do you, how do you settle uh, the peace or, or, or gain the peace that you need in your relationship with God? Uh, well, you surrender. That's all you do. Uh, if you've, and we'll talk about this in a little bit. Sometimes if you have conflict with other people, you negotiate. Does anybody do that? My kids are negotiators. And I'll say, this is the rule, and they'll say, okay, but what about this? And they'll try to, you know, work their angles into things. And, and compromise is great. When it comes to relationships, compromise is great. But everybody understand this about Jesus. There's no negotiation. There's no compromise. You can't come to Jesus and say, hey, listen, I'm going to give you Christmas and Easter. What do you say? No? All right, I'll give you two more Sundays during the year. Deal? No, that's not how it works. He's not impressed by your church attendance, although please come, it's fun. Uh, he's, in fact, it tells us that anything that we do, any of our works to him, they, they don't factor into some bargaining you know, a ploy that we would have. They're like filthy rags to him. All of, all of our very best is, is he doesn't need it. So what does he need? He needs, he needs us to surrender. He needs us to say, you know what? My way is not your way. And my way is not the best way. And so now I surrender my way. And I look to only you, Jesus, to justify me before a holy God. I receive from you Take from me my life. I give up. 
You can do that right here today. You can come down after the service, and it, uh, we'll explain it more uh, in detail and, and help you understand what it is to put your faith in Jesus Christ. But listen, that's why Jesus came. That's why we make the fuss over Christmas, because a baby was born who would bring us peace with the Holy God. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen? It's good stuff. Make sure you got that in place. Now let's talk about peace in here. 